crowd me out, dog. Big boy, what is it? He don't know. He's got worried now. He comes and sits in my lap in the morning. I'm just getting up. I got, they got on to me yesterday, but I combed my hair. Today's going to be, oh my God, sister. We're going to talk about my sister. One of them, anyway. Me and her sit up yesterday. Leave it up. Madison alone. You don't need nothing. Uh, uh, and we watched all that impeachment crap. Now, she is a devout Republican. Never worked a day in her life. Yeah. Except when she left home. After she left home, she married a rich guy. Hello, Mr. Steve. Well, goodness gracious. Are we still there? I had to sneeze. Dog left. Scared, scared him. He left. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, good lord. I'm going to sneeze or die. I'm out of there. Anyway, we got to talking last night. She, she called me. Well, she called me about ten times yesterday every time they made a speech. And uh, what did she say was so funny? She says, uh, if they don't have to honor that subpoena, She's a Republican now. And then she worked on the election board, for God's sakes. You know, when they sit down there and mark off the name when you come in to vote. And she's even campaigned. She, she only got one eardrum. She can't hear out of the other one. She won't wear her hair and ain't half done. So, uh, what was so funny? She said, she says, well, when I get a subpoena, I'm not going. I said, okay, you probably go to jail, then, but that's besides the point. You probably go to jail, so I told her. She said, no, well, she said, all the uh, lawyers and senators and stuff, they need to go to jail. I said, well, they're going to the Supreme Court, and we might go to jail. Anyway, what she said, so that she's always getting subpoenaed, I guess it's what they would call it, subpoenaed for jury duty. But you got to real mind, this, this woman's 90 years old. She's been going to jury duty since she's 80. Ever since she started helping on the election board, I said, well, that's where they get you. I've went a couple of times myself on jury duty. I'm an independent liberal uh, with, with a little bit of a... Uh, Republican values, so that's why I decided I'd be, I'm neither one side or the other, I'm on the independent side. And I ain't too much liberal, and I ain't too much what they call a conservative. You get it right here in a minute. I wonder who the hell smart is me or her. Anyway, they choose her all the time for jury duty. Now she sat there and didn't, hell, I don't know, a shroud, I guess, but I keep telling her. And um, she takes plastic and darning needles. They won't ever take a uh, metal one. But anyway. And she, she uh, sometimes she'll have two or three jury duties a year. That's how many times. She can't hear anyway. I said, and you don't wear your hearing aid? How do you? She said, well, I like to smile. I said, so you're, you're judging these people on their smile. Well, she said, yeah. She said, if I forget my hearing aid, that's all I can see is her smile. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. <laughs> I think when you're 90 years old, you don't need to be chosen for jury duty. She's two years older than I am. <sighs> but anyway, she told me, I don't have to go anymore for, uh, if I'm speeding. I said, okay, get body, you probably don't have to go no more. I just spend. Anybody want a 90-year-old person up there judging something's ridiculous. That's why they shouldn't have 
shouldn't have Supreme Court justice for life, I don't think. I think when you're 60 years old, you don't need to be serving on anything. You should be enjoying your life. What I'm trying to do. Uh, today is my plan. I'm going to talk to her and see how she's doing this morning. Though. She's probably been up since 4 o'clock. She was in bed by noon. Then back up again in about 30 minutes. I think she's one of them. See, that's the person. That's what I keep telling her. I said, well, why do you even lay down 30 minutes? Well, it gives me a boost. I said, okay. She's hard-headed and stubborn, too, just like me. Uh, but anyway, I cleaned up, combed my hair. I got a, what it says, the team, I think is what it says on it. Shirt. But yeah, we watched that. I watched that impeachment. <laughs> and the, I was more tickled at my sister than I was. I already knew what the outcome of that was going to be. I'm curious what the Senate. My question was, and nobody answered it correctly, well, how come you don't have to show up if you're subpoenaed? Just if, well, if you work for the president or whatever, or up in office, high office, and this, that, and the other. Mm, that makes sense. Uh, you don't have to show up for a subpoena, huh? Maybe it's just a suggestion you show up for a subpoena. That'd be my question. I'd be curious to see what the Supreme Court votes on that. I don't think they're going to throw him out of there. I think they should have just reprimanded him and go home. He's... Uh, I ain't into politics. I'm going to be like my sister. I'm just going to vote if they got a good smile. That's what she does, how she votes them up. Well, he don't need to go to prison. He's a nice guy. He looks like he's got a good smile. Okay. Even though he killed 27 people. <laughs> That's what... Well, I didn't hear that. Did you hear that? I said, Bonnie, you're sitting up on that jury you're supposed to put in your hearing aid. I blame that on the judicial system. They should have her up there. Oh, oh Lord. Uh, she was really listening to that stuff yesterday. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, when you call, I said, your TV's screaming so damn loud in the background, Bonnie, I can't hear me or you. I'll turn it down then. I'll just look at the their mouth moving. I don't think you even read lips either. But anyway, we had a good time. I had this laughed at her. I don't have to go. I, I'm speeding. I don't have to go no more. That's what she said. I just laughed. Okay, buddy, when they go put your old butt in the nursing home or the jail house, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, oh, good Lord. I'm tired this morning. I've got to... Still, I ain't got my health insurance straightened out. Call that guy today. I guess I'll have to call Canada to get that printer and see if I can get that damn thing hooked up to my phone. That's the second printer they sent me. I can't figure them out. I'm never going to buy a wireless printer ever again. It was easy when I had the computer. Just, well, I to hook it up to my laptop and just that way I could just. But I was so much on the phone, I wanted to do my, you know. Whatever. But anyway, uh, I took my medicines. That's one good thing. I want to get out to the cemetery. My daughter said she's going to come by this uh, weekend and take me. I don't know when the hell she's reliable or not. Let's see. My son says, you going to run the vacuum? I said, I, I said, I thought that was your job. He said, well, I've been sick. I said, well, yeah, and I ain't doing do it. My back's going to be out if I do that. I don't really have that much carpet in the house. My wife's master bedroom has carpet. But hell, I've got sheets over the lamps, over the bed, over everything. So I don't have to run the vacuum in there, but in there in 10, let's see, since 2013. Well, my daughter has this, that, and other. She's been dealing around in her jewelry and shit. Whatever, she took a bunch of it home the other day. I don't give a damn. I said, don't disturb it. She said, well, you don't need to have it as a shrine. I said, I don't need that room. 
She said, that's the only room in the house that ain't choked up, ain't piled up with crap all the way to the ceiling. I said, nope, my wife didn't like it cluttered. So she was not a hoarder like I am. She said, yeah, she's a, probably shaking her fist at you. Because <laughs> the rest of the house looks like hell, she said. I said, well, quit buying stuff. I ain't been out to buy anything in about a week. That's good for me. Probably going on over a week. And I've been trying to use up the crap. I got a whole load of stuff going out to the cemetery. I hope that guy steals some more shit so I'll have more room out there. <laughs> That's what I think. I don't care if he steals all them little ornaments and stuff. I take some old these kids. I don't care. They last for a day or so. I've got some uh, big vases and stuff that glow at dark. It's got lights in it to the solar lights. Uh, I gotta put them out there. Uh, there's a little girl across the way. They decorate her grave up. And sometimes if I have more than I can need, I take it over there and put it on her grave. Then the, there's World War. Civil War veteran, I think he's, yeah, Civil War veteran. Tree about this big around grew up, in, about the big around grew up in his grave. And a little headstone ain't that big. And it was broke. I put it back together, put it, you know, put it back, stacked it back on top of one another. I told that uh, cemetery guy needs to trim that tree up. Guess I take my electric chainsaw out there and do it. I'm, I'm too old to be pulling brush at my age. Or sitting on any damn jury duty. I quit that a few years ago. I sat there on jury duty one night, one day, and this woman had just walked in with the lawyers. And everybody sitting on the jury, we didn't even know who it was going to be going to trial. The trial was going to sit under. And the woman that sat beside me, we were two alternates. And uh, 12 jurors and two alternates. But anyway, she said, look at her. She's guilty as hell. Look at her. I said, we don't even know what the hell. I looked at her I said, we don't even know what she's being tried for. It could be for picking her teeth for all I knew. But uh, as the trial went on, this one pregnant lady couldn't couldn't stay couldn't serve, so they picked that woman beside me, the crazy one, said she's guilty before she even one word came out of her mouth. And I'm I was glad I didn't I just I sat there as an alternate, but they chose her instead of me, and I was glad about that. Glad I didn't want to mess with it. But she did she. Something about five or six, seven o'clock in the morning, she coming back from a dentist appointment, which was just a lie, and she hit a kid and drug it 56 feet and it died. So I said, it was horrible. That's what I told. Her. After a while, I got where I didn't want to go. I said I want to judge these people. I've had never, you know, all my deals have been hung, hung in, uh, hung up in hung juries. Except one insurance deal. I said, I'll give him the damn money. Shit. <laughs> I don't listen to it. Hell, we don't know how bad that guy's hurt. Give him the damn money. And they did. I said, Hell, we don't know how he feels. Hell, he could be real crippled up. Shit. The insurance got plenty of money. Give him the damn money. But, poor Bobby. Yeah. And that is her nickname. It ain't even real name. She, uh, I told her, I said, I said, buddy, you sit there and listen to that crap, and all it does is upset you. She said, well, ain't you got yours on? I said, yeah, I got my TV on listening to it part-time just because you want me to answer questions every time you call. If I don't listen, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But she's got in her mind. She ain't showing up for no more spinas. I said, the only spina you ever got was a jewelry duty. Uh, I got, and I just laughed at her. We had a good time. Uh, but that's what it. That's what's happening. I mean, it's just it's just sad that the American people have to put up with crap. 
I said, why the hell would we elect them damn people in the first damn place? They're supposed to handle that shit. That's what we put them in office for, didn't we? Even if they didn't vote for them, they won the, the, the vote, so they should run the run it. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm pretty well going to let it go this morning, short one. But remember, being kind and considerate don't cost you a thing. That's what I always preach. Uh, you guys take care, have that great day. Remember, it's politics. <laughs> it's a, just politics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good Lord.